And let's bring Westy in. While I read this tweet, Troy, this is specifically for you and our fans. It says, from the Las Vegas Posse, Troy, on Twitter. We're running out of ideas for things to tweet with the season on hold right now. Tweet us your favorite thing about having a CFL team in Las Vegas. What would be yours, sir? Well, I saw Jeff Reinbold highlighted with that question. And and maybe if that's what brought Coach Reinbold into the CFL, then I, I'm going to have to jump into that camp. That's Fantastic what their legacy. Personality. That's their legacy, huh? Br- giving Jeff Reinbold his first job. Well, their legacy, I don't know. That's where Cavillo also started, right? I know it wasn't a great situation for him, but it was. I hated that whole American expansion thing. I absolutely detested every single second of it, man. So okay. I, I don't have much positive to say about it. I'm glad that we opened up that can of worms, by the way, because I'm looking at your career here. You were an all-star in 92 and 94, all Canadian in 92. What did you hate? 97, 98, 99 too, I think. Yeah, but who's counting? That's not on the thing you're looking at? No, <laughs> you got to go update your Wikipedia. Your Wikipedia hasn't been updated since 1994, Troy. At least we can. Uh, yeah, I need to jump on that, right? Yeah, just yeah, add, well, some, uh, add some numbers to it. <laughs> at least we got you laughing because I'm actually, I didn't get into the league till 99 full time. I missed all those games and road trips. I You're one of the first to have that amount of disdain for the U.S. American experiment. Why is that? It just, you know, I had come, I had just been in college for four years in South Dakota as a Canadian kid, always wanting to go to an American college. Grew up like that, right? America was big time. You got into America, man. That was, I just kind of grew up with one of those sort of Canadian, uh, you know, just uh, didn't value ourselves enough maybe as a Canadian thing. And then had the opportunity to go to South Dakota for four years. And I just came back to Canada and I, I was so happy to come back to Canada after four years in, in America. And I found out, I thought I loved America when I went down there, but I did not like it at all. And I was so happy to come back. And I understand they needed the cash infusion, right? It was a survival move for sure. But man, some of the things like, first of all, the Baltimore Stallions, it just, they destroyed us. And I, I was, I was intimidated when we went to play Baltimore. It was, a, they were really good. And I their their stadium was just a, brutal i hated it and it sucked we went into birmingham and guys on our team were climbing the fence because they were throwing racial words at a bunch of our players it was just madness and then i think down in um one of the maybe shreveport i think the whole wall on the shower was ants it was black everyone thought it was the wall but they started moving it was all ants i just didn't like it it felt weird right the cfl all the canadian pride attached with it we're down in america it just felt weird. I didn't like it. Troy, this is absolutely amazing stuff. And I had, had not planned to go down this road, by the way. Um, Colin in Ottawa writes, then he says, the introductory press conference in Las Vegas and all the interesting people up on stage with Nick Maletti, the owner of the posse. Yes, there were strippers, midgets, unicorns. I don't know. That's my kind of thing. I don't know. But uh, but it yeah, didn't last. I mean, you know, all, the, all, the, all that sort of part. But, and you know what? When we went, I'd never been to Vegas when we went down there for that game. And I remember the stuff being handed out on the corners and stuff like that. And uh, I'm not a party or anything like that. And I came out of that. To me, the end of the world is Vegas. Like that when there's a, I just, I just didn't like it at all. I, I didn't like the trip. And then the game stunk, right? There was two, 400 people. Half of them were from Winnipeg. And it just, yeah, I, I, I don't know, man. The whole, I know that the, the, the league, it probably saved the CFL back then. But oh, I didn't it like ab- it at all. It absolutely did. So, but you're not planning trips to Las Vegas anytime soon now, let alone in 1994. Well, if I would have known, I, you know, with in football trips like that, man, you never really had a chance to go and, and visit a part of the country or anything like that. But with all the outdoor stuff, that's what would it, what would I'd be interested in uh, Vegas now, man, is to go take part in a bunch of the uh, outdoor things you can do there. I, I've had friends that have gone down there, and they said, man, it's not about the strip for them. They say you get away from all that and go and visit the canyons and all that sort of stuff. It's pretty cool, all the, the uh, outdoor stuff that they have to offer there. So I think that's what I'd dig the most. Yeah, abs- but you're right. That's not You're there to play football. You're not there to be a sightseer or a yeah. tourist, and that's what people really don't the understand. business trip, right? 
It's a business trip. But the other thing, the other thing was, you know, years ago, I was really promoting the the CFL expansion and they were selling the T-shirts and stuff. And the CFL head office were like, Rod, stop talking about it. We don't want it remembered. We don't. So once once that book came out uh, by Ed, uh, uh, Ed Willis in Vancouver. Yeah, Ed Willis. Uh, Ed okay, Willis. Sorry, yeah. It was Ed Willis. I read it and I'm like, oh yeah, now I remember. But as you know, Troy, your mind only has really only remembers the good things. Your mind blocks out the bad things. Once I read the book, I'm like, oh yeah, now I'm understanding why they want to forget about this. So, anyways, sorry if I brought, picked at a scab or brought up a bad uh, topic here. Oh, no. Other than that, how are things in Winnipeg in the world of Troy Westwood amid COVID nineteen? Well, it's you know our. The whole quarantine aspect for a lot of folks, you know, if you're alone, I, I can't imagine the time here if you've had to deal with that alone. But for us, our house is absolutely beautiful chaos. And it's just, I mean, we've got our daughter lives with us with her uh, boyfriend uh, slash fiance. Our grandson lives with us. Our 12 year old son lives with us. We've got four dogs. We've got a few beautiful backyard. So, yeah, as far as that whole dynamic of it, we, we've really enjoyed the family time and that sort of thing. And I've been, done what I can to keep Trey extra active, sort of like during the, uh, you know, we've been playing road hockey for an hour, hour and a half every day. We try and go out for bike rides and play soccer as well and things of that nature. So it's, it's been fun within the context of the, the strangeness and craziness of COVID and how it's affected the sports world and, and our jobs specifically, Rod, and that sort of thing. When it first came out and everything was shutting down, people were kind of panicked at, at our radio station, TSN 1290 in Winnipeg. But to me, I was like, "What? There's nothing to worry about here. It, we don't need games. Like, if if three, four guys and gals sit, sit around a table that love sports, the conversation about sports are endless. We don't need games happening now to talk about things that we're looking forward to, revisit things that have happened, all that sort of stuff. So I was never worried about content or or things of great interest. Uh, so yeah, it's been a very interesting little journey for a lot of us. I think that have been in, involved with the sports business." And it's just, uh, boy, it's going to be this whole buffet upcoming here when things get going again. Hopefully, the CFL can work its way back, and the NHL coming, the NBA, if MLB can pull its head out of its backside and get going. But we are in store over the next couple of months, maybe here when sports get back going. That it's just going to be a buffet of the things we love. Speaking of, it sounds like your pizza pops are done. Do you want to go get them, or can you answer a couple more questions? I don't eat pizza pops, bruh. <laughs> oh, that, I thought that was the microwave going off. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> maybe I think Mum's in the kitchen. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> uh, well, it, it makes me. Wa- I said the same thing. I had all these people coming up up to me when this started, going, uh, "What are you going to talk about with no games?" I'm like, Ch-ch-ch. "Just watch. Don't yeah. worry. Leave that to us. Yeah. We'll handle it just fine." But in Winnipeg. How are your listeners dealing with no bombers, no jets? I mean, are they cool with talking NASCAR, Korean baseball, PGA, story time? I mean, how how are you entertaining them? Well, we didn't. We we would touch on. We adopted a team uh, in the Korean league. I can't even remember what the heck they were called. The Eagles. Uh, I can't They're remember. Their last the, place. The, the, Their the last team. place. Yeah. yeah they yeah. were in last place. They stunk. So. <laughs> yeah. So we bailed on them, but we didn't spend much time talking about that stuff. No, we, we we would we still talked a lot of CFL and Bombers and NHL and Jets and and NFL stuff and NBA stuff and MLB like there was still all kinds of stuff to talk about that we had all kind like we we were we, there wasn't a single day or segment Rod that we were we were stumped and not knowing what we we're going to we had all kinds of fun with top ten lists and stuff like that but there's always great debate and discussion to be had with personnel. You know, expectations, mistakes made, what's going to happen when things get back going, all that sort of stuff. It hasn't been a struggle whatsoever. And, and people here, I think everyone really across the sport uh, world, huh? everyone's just so yearning for sports to come back. And you know what affected me the most, Rod? Wasn't wasn't watching sports. Like, I, I'm 53, man, and I've been playing sports since I was five. Hockey, soccer, football later. But I really miss playing, man. Like, I still play soccer. I still play hockey. I, I coach my son in soccer. And to, to watch him, you know, not be able to play and listen to struggling with not being able to play. And for, you know, it's been however many weeks now that since I've touched a soccer ball in a game, which is the longest stretch of my life, that's I just miss playing. 
oh, man, I miss playing. And even for me as a washed up old beer leaguer or senior men's soccer player, man, the, the competitive feeling of playing a game that you love, that's what I miss the most. Oh, yeah. The kids are the ones suffering the most right now. I don't think there's any doubt about that. A lot of people are suffering, but it's particularly young people. Um, Some of our viewers and producer Clark want to know if you have any of your old one-bar helmets. If so, uh, do you have any in the vicinity? The kicker helmet. No, I've got... I've got an old Chris Walby helmet that I had him sign and I gave to Trey. It's in Trey's room. I could go throw it on for you real quick. But no, it's all one good. Bar, in my final couple of years, John, I was what John Ryan. John Ryan was wearing the two bar, and I thought, man, JR looks pretty cool in that. So I made the transition. I went to the actual helmet and actual mask. It felt I felt like a man out there with that mask on. The one bar never looked that great i mean did you wear it because that was the thing to do you were handed it to you uh, when you got there or what yes yeah. yes and well and in college right like that's what Car- cameron and kennard wore when i went and kicked around with them for a little bit before i went to school and and when i remember i'd have to saw off that there it was always a two bar a plastic two bar and i'd have to saw it off and and grind it down to get the one bar thing i and being a soccer guy i hated having any mask if i could have chosen i would have picked no mask whatsoever i hated how it impeded my my vision to the ball man but i you, know, you get used to it and i pulled it so super down low all the time right i just hated having the bar there uh but the rookies show up they're too afraid to say anything so they just take it the one that drives me nuts is when kids come in and you they don't know how to we say their name wrong and they're too shy to tell you that you're saying it wrong so then it's like year four or five yeah. they're like oh by the way my name said this i'm like why didn't you tell me that as a rookie? But you're just too afraid to say that anything, right? a lot in the hockey world, especially, right? Oh. Guys have been around the league for X number of years, and all of a sudden they announce they want their name pronounced the proper way. I, I can respect that. Well, it's like it's too late now. Mike, Mike Edom, safety for the Riders, came to me a couple years ago. Oh, by the way, it's Edom. Dude. <laughs> yeah. You've been in the league <laughs> six years. You know, he didn't even start here. But anyways, Troy, we could go all day. I appreciate this. I, ho- I hope that this tickled your ribs a little bit to, to have a few chuckles. And uh, we're watching what you're doing out there. You're doing a great job. I appreciate it. But I should say this, though. What's your deal with Trump? That's the one burning question that I have for you, man. Like, does it keep you up at night, the president of the United States? I have been... I have followed politics politics intently since my college days. I was involved with the young Republicans on campus at Augustana in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I met Bush Sr. I had a signed 8x10 of him in my room. I had a 8x10 of Ronald Reagan in my room. I love politics, man. I've always been really deeply involved and have watched and, and considered politics as a possible career at, at times for sure as well. I think Donald Trump is the most disgusting, despicable leader the free world has ever seen and this isn't about right and left people think because of the comments and statements that i make you know i get all the names the the snowflake the libtard all that sort of stuff there are certain issues economic issues generally i'm very conservative social issues i am very liberal right and but people think that i'm a certain thing because i'm always going after trump i don't care about the left right thing it's not about conservative liberal democrat republican to me man it's about decency he is vile, and, and it's so disgusting to me. I just don't understand, man, the people that have seen the things that he has done. There is video and audio of the of the amount of lies and all the rest of it and how he's breaking down simple things that are just basic democracy, man. He's attacking democracy, and I'm just astonished at the people that sit there and watch that. And, you know, all of it is just uh, the most remarkable facade in our lifetimes, and I, I, watching and seeing how this unfolds over the next 10, 20 years as history reflects on this, Rod, I think is going to be remarkable. We are living in remarkable times, and never b- before has America ever had a, a, anywhere near a leader as, as dangerous and as despicable as Donald Trump. I just can't stand the human being. I'm glad I asked, and I, I'm glad that you were able to get off your chest your political leanings because I never really knew. So you kind of explain why you do it, and uh, I don't have an opinion on it. I can't imagine the blowback that you get. Um, I just find it entertaining. Not much. There's <laughs> not don't? a lot of Trumpsters in Canada, man. No, you know, there like, is not, not a lot of people. Are, people that are, pro, but there are some. 
right? There's people that approach me. I was driving in a parking lot in Winnipeg the other day, a dude in a red pickup with a Confederate flag sticker on the front drove by me. Right. So there, there, there are, tr- and there, there are Trumpsters here. I, I deal with them. I, I've deal with, I've seen a couple of make America great hats in Winnipeg, people sitting down at restaurants or in a movie and have had discussions with them. And on, on Twitter, I, I don't know what it is, man. It's probably 95% to 5%, you know, 95 that, that don't appreciate Donald Trump. And even if people are conservative in our country or Republican down there, people don't like him, right? People can see through the, the, the facade and all the rest of it. But I, 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 you know, at first, Rod, I'd get upset talking to them and I'd think idiot and all the rest of the stuff. I'm at a place now where I want to help enlighten them, right? And like I'll engage in discussion and all the rest of it, but I don't want to create any friction with it. I just want to try and make a point or two to help help them think a little bit differently, man. And it's not about left or right. It's not about conservative a uh, Republican, Democrat, liberal, nothing like that. It's just about look at the man. What are you accepting? What what, what are you f- supporting and following? All right, Troy, I appreciate it, man. I'll let you get back on with your day. Thanks for the time today and stay safe out there. Hey, brother, take care, man. Troy Westwood joining us from TSN 1290 Winnipeg, and I'm glad uh, to have him return the favor. They're nice enough to have me on their program quite often. It's nice to get Troy over here. I wish that we were talking a little more CFL, but we can't. And we'll get back on track with some of the quick six show topics here in the time that we have left in hour one, of which we have got a we got some time here. Um, <clears throat> maybe I should say, what do you want to talk about? Because I kind of been leading the discussion here for hour one. Well, yes, you should. But um, I like Troy. He's so passionate when it comes to the game, and you know, you know, I'm sitting there smiling when he's just. Taking, it seems like he just took control of their newsroom over at TSN uh, Radio in Winnipeg and said, we don't need sports. We're good. We've got so much to talk about when you put sports people around the table and let them go. And he's one of those guys, right? I mean, you can just see how passionate he is, not just about sports, but about life, right? And, you know, a guy, you've had plenty of conversations with him. It's easy to get rolling with guys like that. When you have good, talented people, uh, content's never an issue. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.